There are two modes in Polytopia, Perfection, a mode where you have a limited amount of time to try and score as many points as possible, aka the bad one, and then there's Domination. The goal of Domination is quite simple, be the last tribe standing on the square by destroying all the other tribes. This is clearly the better mode. I recommend starting with Domination as there's no time limit that could cause an issue for you while you figure things out, and provided the computer is set low enough it will be no match for you as you quickly master the basics. Once you've selected Domination, or Perfection, I'm not going to judge, you'll be placed into the tribe select screen. There are 14 tribes in total, each with their own specific tool to start with. It can be as simple as a different technology, or a special power like the ability to train dragons or gigantic mutant crabs instead of regular giants. None of the tribes provide you with a distinct advantage over the other tribes, even including the ones you have to pay for, so take a look around and pick out one you like. I tend to stick with the first four for simplicity's sake. For now, I'm going to pick Bardor. Once you have selected your tribe, you'll go into the next menu. This is the last menu, I promise. This allows you to select the difficulty of the computer, as well as how many computer players you want there to be. I went with easy and 3 CPU players. The number of players affects the size of the map, and I prefer having more space to play around with, so I normally use 3 to 4 opponents. As for the difficulty, start with easy, and then move up a level when you're able to beat it with relative ease. And yes, the word crazy is a pretty accurate description of the max level. Okay, welcome to the actual game. When you begin the game, regardless of the mode you picked, you'll start with a small town, a warrior, five stars, stars of the currency of Polytopia, and hopefully some nice resources to get started with. First, let's look at the warrior. Look at him, isn't he just the best thing you've ever seen? Okay, where was I? The warrior is how you will explore the rest of the square, discover new resources, find towns to claim so you can grow your empire, and eventually find your enemies. The warrior is the most basic unit in the game. You can unlock more units later on, like wizards, catapults, and basically a giant version of a warrior, but with a sword this time. Select the warrior by tapping on it, and then tap where you want to go. It doesn't really matter which way you go, but try to head away from water and the edge of the map, because neither are particularly useful right now. You can't get any further with the warrior this turn. Next, let's look at the five stars in the town. Each town will produce a set number of stars at the end of each turn. Right now, this town will produce two stars at the end of each turn. The higher level the town, the more stars it will produce. So, how do you level up a town? To level up a town, you need to provide the town with enough population. At level 1, the town needs 2 population to level up to level 2. You get population by interacting with the land within the town's borders. As Bardor, the best way to level up a town is to hunt 2 animals around your town. This will cost 4 stars, but you will make them back in the next turn, so go ahead and do it. When the town upgrades, its stars per turn will increase by 1, as well as giving you another reward. At level 1, this reward is the option to get an explorer, which will go around and show you some of the surrounding area, or just bounce back and forth and show you nothing, it's kind of a toss up, or give you an extra star per turn on top of the one you already got. I personally like the workshop, because money is good. When you've done everything you can, press the tick in the bottom right, this will move to the next turn. At the start of every new turn, you can move your unit again. Again, tap it and move towards the cloud and see what's beneath, and hopefully you will find another town. Because we upgraded the town in the last turn, we now have 5 stars to work with again. Let's go over what else you can do with stars other than gaining population. This is a tech tree, it allows you to buy new technologies to go along with the one you started with. These technologies can either be a new unit or a new way to level up towns. Once you unlock a technology, you will have access to unlock one or two more techs. Since I started with hunting, I have the power to unlock all of the level 1 tech, as well as archery and forestry, both being the level 2 techs that branch off from hunting. This gives the tech tree its tree aspect. I hope I did a good job of explaining it. I'm sure you'll figure it out pretty fast, as it's not too hard to get your head around. This turn I didn't have enough stars to buy what I wanted to, so I just went and trained a new warrior. Training new units also costs stars. Different units will cost different amounts of stars. Each town can only support so many units. Each population block will get a black dot in the middle when the unit slot is being used. The higher level the town, the more units it can support. So this is another motive to upgrade your towns. So, next turn. I now have enough stars to afford what I wanted to buy, so I went back into the tech tree. I unlocked forestry, which allows me to cut down trees to give me extra stars. It also gives you the option to build lumber huts that increase your population. I tend to not do this because I like to make space for other things, and I like to use the stars you get from cutting down the trees to gain an early advantage. Again, feel free to do either, or both. The forest can be used for either. When you move one of your units into an unclaimed town, or enemy's town, you'll need to keep it there for a full turn to be able to claim it as your own. 
This gives your enemies a chance to try and stop you from taking the town. Fortunately for me, there are no enemies around at the moment, so this town is free for the taking. Adding more towns to your empire will slightly increase the cost of more technology in the tech tree, but the town will also provide you with more stars. This is to try and get you to upgrade towns as you go along instead of leaving them all at level 1. A few high level towns is much better than many, many low level towns. This keeps the star production high, but the tech costs down. Again, more units is generally good for exploring and fighting, so get as many as you can. Because of my still very low technology, I decided to buy mathematics. Mathematics allows you to build sawmills, which doubles the power of any nearby lumber huts, as well as providing you the power to train catapults. The whole community tends to hate them, so make sure to spam as many as possible, particularly in online matches. Catapults are an incredibly long-range, hard-hitting unit with little to no health, so leave them in the back and let them bomb your enemies from half the map away. To claim a new town, tap on the cross swords icon above the town. It says they agreed to join your emerging empire, but due to the use of swords, I'm not completely sure this is the case. But oh well, you have a new town now. Do the same with this town as you did with the capital and try to level it up as much as possible. When a town gets to level 3, you'll get another star per turn as well as a new reward. This time you either get 5 stars or a city wall. 5 stars are pretty self-explanatory, it's 5 extra stars. City wall gives any unit standing within the town a huge resistance to enemy attacks. This is very helpful when defending, so I always pick this option. Again, this is up to you. Riding is a tech that allows you to build the rider. Think of a warrior but riding a horse. It, it runs around very fast and hits stuff with a club. They are very useful and widely used for exploring. When you find ground that isn't native to your tribe, proceed with caution as there will most likely be enemies in that area. Organization allows you to harvest fruit, which will increase your population, very similar to hunting. Climbing will allow you to stand on mountains. This will double the range that you can see from that tile. This is very useful for seeing enemies coming before they get to you. New town, just do the same thing as the other two, level it up as much as possible. Make sure to keep exploring outwards, as the faster you get hold of the land, the less land there will be for your enemies to get hold of. Roads allow you to set up a road network. This slightly increases the population of all your towns, and allows your units to move at twice their normal speed. We found our first enemy. When you first meet them, they won't be hostile to you, particularly on easy mode. So make a decision. If you have enough warriors and troops nearby, then try attacking. Otherwise, back up and make sure they don't steal any of your towns. Fishing allows you to fish. Fishing increases your population, much like organization and hunting. As mentioned before, connecting towns with roads slightly increases its population. The other tribe doesn't seem much up for a fight, so I decided to spend some time upgrading my towns and preparing units for when they do want to fight. As you unlock technologies, some technologies will give you a quest for you to do. When you complete a quest, you will get a special reward building that will provide you with three population. Sailing allows you to build ports. Ports are a special building that can only be built on water. When you move a unit onto a port, it will magically turn into a boat. How this works I don't know, but it's very useful for when you want to explore the ocean. When a town gets to level 4, it gets the option of 3 extra population, or expanding its borders by one tile in every direction. This is a ruin. Ruins can give you many different kinds of rewards, such as a new technology, stars, population, or a giant.
When exploring, try to stay on the mountains as it gives you a much better view of the area. There is no time limit in the game, so spend as long as you like trying to work out what to do. I very much like this feature, as I'm sure you can see. When a town gets to level 5, you get the option of a park, which is only useful in perfection mode as it just gives you a bunch of points. Or the option of a giant. A giant is just a super version of a warrior. If you're playing in perfection, always pick the park. If you're playing in domination, always pick the giant. The game has some different ambient music, depending on what area of the land you're looking at. Not very important for playing it, but, but quite a nice feature. The ruin gave me the technology to ride boats into deep ocean as well as upgrade boats to the third tier, the battleship. Our enemies over here made a big mistake. They attacked one of my units that was clearly threatening its homeland. How could someone commit such a horrible sin? To teach him a lesson I decided to bat him with my giant that's just standing there doing nothing. The enemy's head on the score screen now has angry red things around it. This means the enemy will do its best to try and kick you off the square. Luckily for me, that's not going to happen anytime soon. Smithery allows you to train swordsmen. Swordsmen are just much better warriors. It allows you to build a forge, which doubles the power of any nearby mines. I should have probably mentioned this before. To attack an enemy unit, move your unit next to the enemy unit, unless your troop is a ranged unit, and then just move it with an attack range. To attack, tap the giant red circle on their heads. When you hit an enemy, it will hit you back, unless you one-shot it, in which case it can't, because it's, well, dead. With the ammo pretty much done for, I went to explore the ocean to deal with the other two players. I guess I spoke too soon. They managed to stop me from taking their catapult by killing my unit that was capturing it. The other town was not so lucky.
with that, I'm going to leave you to try and work the rest out for yourself. I'll leave this game running at high speed, just in case you're curious of how it goes.